week's interview, we will be talking about what clients want. So, and how do we meet our clients' expectations most effectively? So, um, let's meet with uh, Mr. Raj Babu and hear what he has to say about this. So, uh, good morning, Raj. Uh, hope you're doing well today. I'm doing well. Um, yeah, thank you very much, Sitara. My pleasure to be here um, and you know sharing my thoughts with everyone um, regarding the lay of the land uh, with regard to our business. Yes, it's a very big pleasure to talk to you as well. So, um, so like just for some context on what the issue is, um, consultants, clients, and all of their companies come together for many different reasons and for many ways. When a client reaches out to a consultant, they are looking for help and they have a very specific need. Some will need like, for instance, there are many reasons why a client might need help, like for crunching numbers or for product tweaking or simply for ideas, while others require assistance in much bigger projects such as managing people or building a brand. So the question we would like to ask is what are the common expectations clients have across the board and how to meet them more effectively? So the first question we should address is what is like, let's look at this in the context of Agilisium first of all. Um, what are the types of clients that have worked with Agilisium Consulting? So can you please explain a little bit about that? Our clients are typically so far, the clients have been uh, large enterprise clients. Uh, clients, uh, you know, most of our clients are kind of in the, you know, I would say 70%, 70, 75 percent category or uh, Fortune uh, 500 kind of companies. Uh, they have a global business, a global footprint, and uh, and they because uh, and their businesses are complex, right? So they have lot of uh, uh, lot of transactions, lot of data. They need to understand uh, the customers. They need to understand the uh, the market. Uh, they need to understand the supply chain. So uh, most of the clients coming to us, uh, they are coming, and they have a lot of data in these things, right? Generating, so they are coming to kind of uh, how to better manage this data, uh, and then how to better um, kind of uh, you know make a business sense out of that data. Uh, not in a general sense. They don't come to us in a general sense. Hey, can you just take a look at all the data and say they come with specific instructions. Uh, they come with a uh, hey, can you build, uh, you know, uh, analytics uh, on this one? Uh, we want to understand the supply chain. Uh, so give, they give specific uh, targets, specific goals. They have a very clear target and a goal for a project when they come to us and they want specialists people who have uh, solid expertise in that, uh, you know, in executing that. So engineering expertise um, to do that. That is what they reach out for. So, wow, it's really impressive that most of our clients are from the 70th percentile of the Fortune 500. That means we must have quite a few, uh, like we must have a very uh, experienced and very large companies in need of us that need our help. Right. Right, and and the, the interesting thing is, uh, almost all of our customers, uh, uh, all these seventy percent of uh, you know who uh, of the lar large enterprises, global enterprises, they all have uh, many large companies. Right, as a client, uh, uh, sorry, as a vendor, they have uh, they have uh, you know all the big names we all hear about TCS, Cognizant, Capgemini, and all those big companies. But the thing is, basically, uh, they they still need a niche specialist, uh, um, you know, in this area. They are not getting the kind of expertise and the uh, you know specialized engineering uh, that they need to execute on these projects from those companies. So they bring us on for those special uh, specialty, um, you know, uh, engineering areas. Even though there are many large vendors, so called large globally known vendors are available there. Uh, they call, uh, call upon us uh, because of the quality of our engineering and quality of our specialist. Um, uh, you know, we, 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 we really take a pride that all our engineers, our specialists and architects uh, are really top notch. They are considered in our client places more top notch than the other large so-called large vendors. Um, so that's why we are called upon. 
which um, and it shows like if we have the if we have clients who are so well known, then we must have the skills to back it back up our name. If uh, so many well known people want our skills. That is exactly right. We obviously don't have the big brand, uh, big brand name or, you know, uh, uh, you know, market recognition like these bigger companies. Uh, in spite of that, clients give a call upon and give us the business because they know we can deliver. They are not giving us because, uh, you know, we are a popular name or we are a big name. They are giving us because we have the people. Um, so in the end, it all comes to you all here because it's really your skills and your capability is why we are in business. The we are, you know, the bigger companies are in business because of bigger brand names, uh, you know, uh, bigger scale. But we are in business only because of the people, uh, the expertise of the people we have, which is all of you and what you deliver. So that delivery and the delivery capability and the technical expertise is the re reason why, you know, customers work with, with us and is the reason we are in business. Yes, that's really well said, Raj. The name doesn't make the company. The people, the employees are what make the company. Yes, the employees, our employees, our, uh, you know, the commitment and the expertise of our employee, that is what is really um, keeping us uh, in the business. Um, it is really, you know, not that the, the name and the brand is not important, but in our case, a small company like us, in our case, uh, the employee and the employee skill set and expertise is what is very important. We all these um, companies have been uh, working with us. So what, what, what was their overall experience working with us like? Uh, what was the feedback that they had given in general? They it sounds like they had a, mostly a positive experience if they are willing to give such glowing recommendations for Ajilisim. Yes, uh, you know, our customers, uh, you know, are, uh, you know, the, the feedback we have received from our customers so far is that, you know, uh, consistently we are very honest, uh, we are committed, we, uh, we, 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 we deliver on our promise consistently, uh, right? Uh, but like we, we went into a company like Amgen, which is a global uh, leader in biotech. And, uh, you know, there are companies, you can name it TCS, CTS, Capgemini, um, ZS, there are many, 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 many companies, but in the data engineering, specifically, I can speak only for data engineering, uh, pretty much we get most of the business in spite of all these players are there. Uh, and same way, you know, you can go to, um, you can go to UMG and the same thing in NBC. Well, you know, all these companies, you name all the big companies, pretty much almost all of them, if not most of them are there. In spite of that, we are called for and given because our, uh, you know, our uh, actually the, uh, you know, kudos, the compliment goes, needs to go to our uh, client partners like, uh, you know, Abhijit and Arun and Sai. Uh, they make sure, uh, you know, we deliver, uh, you know, uh, and we uh, and the customers know when these, our client partners, they go and commit something, they deliver no matter what. And that is the reason and that is the feedback we get from our customers. Uh, we And they say, hey, we need more people like that. We need more people uh, you need to bring in who can deliver. And that is why they have been giving every single large customer we are there. If you take the last three years, we have grown. Even though, uh, you know, th they may not have necessarily increased their spend in data engineering, but we have grown. That means they are giving more and more business in the data engineering space to us. That means they are taking the business away from other large companies and giving it to us. Why? Because we commit and whatever we commit, we deliver. Um, um, so that is something our customers appreciate. We are very honest about. We never had a situation where in a, I can and I can very proudly say this. We have never had a situation in uh, uh, any of our large customer where they have come in last four years or in the entire history, a customer has called and said, hey Raj, Ajilisim has committed this to us and they did not deliver. I've never had one single call. That's uh, uh, really great. That is yeah. a really, uh, that is something that we as Ajilisians, we should absolutely take pride in that. We, when we say we are going to deliver, we are going to deliver. And 
when uh, all of us employees, we should try to live by that mar motto uh, every day when we do our work. And uh, we should keep that. We all of us should keep that in mind. Like, so Absolutely. if we want, like, if we want to keep working in Agilisium and in every company for that matter, but we want Agilisium especially to be known as when we say we deliver, we are going to deliver. Of course, that's uh, what makes us the best. I would say. Yep. yep, that's very important, as you said, right? Uh, that is a culture that we need to bring in in our organization. And uh, that is a culture we stand by. And, uh, you know, I wish every organization stands by that culture. Uh, I think because both from a personal level and in a professional level, um, we don't, you know, when somebody says something, we always uh, uh, don't want to second guess them whether they will deliver on what they said. We always need to kind of be in a place where we pretty much know that they are going to deliver what they said. And uh, that's a very important attribute. And, uh, you know, if there is one attribute, um, you, you know, if there is one single attribute which I have to tell that Agilisium has to abide by and uh, uh, that has worked for us is that, right? We, 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 we stand by our commitments, whatever we promise, even if that means many times it has been difficult uh, because, uh, um, you know, we have to spend a lot more time and effort to the degree where there have been cases where we have been losing money, but nevertheless, what we have done is okay. It's okay for us to lose money, but we are going to keep our commitment and deliver because sometimes some projects we thought something, we committed something based on that understanding. But once we went in, our understanding changed. Um, you know, we were not aware of that before. So, but still, we didn't come back and go to the customers and say, "Hey, you know what? This is not what we understood." And, uh, you know, that we, we gave our commitment based on a different understanding. We are not going to honor our commitment because that is not the case. We have never done that. Even though, you know, and that is not an easy thing to do. It's a very difficult thing to do because we have to now compensate for all that stuff. And instead of having customer compromise, we have compromised on our side and we have went and delivered because very simple we want to honor our commitment if there is one single thing which you know our customers i want our customers to remember is we honor our commitments absolutely and that is i really appreciate that you said like the in even if uh, we have to cut corners in uh, money we have to honor the commitment and we have if there is a misunderstanding or an issue with the clients we clear it up with them we uh, say this is not what we understood but we are going to go ahead we'll clear up the misunderstanding and we will do it exactly. which is i this is something like all, all like um, there is absolutely something that uh, we should keep on doing exactly and the, this commitment is the reason right everybody knows agilisium when we originally started we are our our core expertise is data analytics uh, data engineering and uh, but now today we have been in DevOps and uh, full stack and there is a lot of things we are doing in full stack actually. And uh, if you just go to our history a year and a half back, just 18 months back, we never had anything full stack. But a customer came to us and said, hey, I trust in you. I trust in your credibility. I trust. So uh, even though we said we don't have the capability, the customer said, you know, I will help you build the capability. You go and work on building the capability, bring partners and build the capability. I'll help you build the capability. But I'm willing to give that even though you don't have the capability because you, you are credible, you trust. So that credibility is what has given us the business in many areas. Same way like data science and data engineering, many of these customers, the customers knows that we don't have capability in some of these areas. But nevertheless, they give us the opportunity uh, because they trust us. Uh, that is very key. That has been very key. And that is why I want all of our employees, um, you know, take that very seriously. Uh, you know, the trust and the commitment and, uh, you know, staying to what we commit is very, very important. Absolutely. Um, so let's uh, move on to the next uh, question. So earlier you had mentioned most of our clients come to us with extremely specific needs. Nobody comes and says, can you analyze all of our data? People say, can you ana like can can you can we have our can we have our supply chain data looked at or data in this particular category? So could you please elaborate a little bit more on what are the general expectations our clients 
have when they seek out our services? The general expectation that uh, the clients have is that, right, uh, we, we kind of, um, you know, initially, initially when they engage, um, we have to draft the expectation, right, what we are going to do and all that stuff. And the general expectation that the customers have is we put the best people, the most capable people for the job and we deliver on those specific uh, expectations on the specific timelines that we are committed. Uh, those are the things, but it all starts with putting the right people. So they always make, uh, you know, they want us to bring in the best people uh, and put them in the projects and uh, have those pe uh, people uh, deliver on that. It starts with that. Once we put the quality people, uh, then actually, you know, the quality of the delivery is taken care because quality people will deliver quality job uh, work. And then they will also deliver uh, on the time, the committed, right? So it's really, it all starts with, um, you know, once we understood the specifics, we bring in the people and we need to set these yeah, the people the clear role and responsibility, what they are responsible for and what they have to deliver. Um, then we need to track that, you know, the timelines, the, what we committed and the quality, what we have committed, we are able to deliver that, constantly keep in check with them and update. Uh, one area, if there is something improvement we have to do is uh, uh, we need to better, uh, you know, as an organization invest uh, in, you know, putting that management layer where we are tracking and updating, sending regular updates and in a better consumable way, the updates. That is something we need to do on. Um, we are very good in doing the work. Um, I think we have a room to improve in how we communicate and update the work we are doing. Exactly, that's extremely important. Even at the smallest level, uh... I believe like even at the smallest level, we also need, we, the employees also need to keep doing that. We also need to, we, we have, we of course should commit to our work and we should also communicate. communicate. That is something that everyone needs to do. Exactly. Yep. That is and something we need to make a more conscious effort to do that. Exactly. Right. Because I think the technical work from the people that comes easy, right? Because we are all technical people. We do the work where generally I've seen um, where people struggle with they find it much easier to do the work, but if they have to put that in an email or update in a system uh, and uh, track it, they generally people, you know, find <laughs> struggle with that. Uh, uh, and uh, that is something we need to make it, you know, do a training or give them better tools, uh, set better expectations, uh, you know, doing that because that is something, you know, uh, that will that will make things a lot more easier, a lot more transparent, uh, you know, so uh, always know exactly where we stand um, and also help us manage the risk and expectation from the customer point of view. Um, so uh, that is something we can, you know, do a, a work. We have to work on and improve. OK, let now we will move on to our next uh, question. So you already touched upon this in the first itself. Uh, when you said that uh, Agilisium, our culture is to deliver and to honor our commitment uh, no matter what. So would you say that is Agilisium's secret on how to attract more clients and serve them more effectively? That is the secret to keep the customer and expand the customer, right? Because see this attribute we talked about, the commitment and the honor, people only when they start working with you, they can see that, right? Um, so that is a very helpful stuff, uh, helpful, helpful attribute uh, to grow a relationship. But it is, but when there is no relationship, somebody is new, they don't know that. But actually, even that helps in a way because what happens is that many of our business comes through word of mouth, and the word of mouth spreads is because come person A is in a company. And when somebody a B comes and asks, hey, I'm looking for some trusted partner because these are all peers, right? They are all networking. Then they say, hey, I'm working with Agilisium and work with us. And even today, like yesterday, I got a, a connection for uh, one of the companies um, through a previous CIO. A previous CIO referred me another one. 
and uh, actually another company from london i got a connection because somebody else put a good word for us the word of mouth so yes actually i was going to say um, the commitment to delivery and staying honest helps us to expand the relationship but also it helps us to get the new relationship because these people who have we have earned the trust and the credibility they spread the word they go and tell to their friends they tell to their peers now those people always people we all want to work with who we all want to pay, work with people whom we can trust and who are credible so the word of mouth spreads and more business comes to us yes you are absolutely right Long, uh, you know short answer is yes this trust and credibility definitely uh, helps with our growth and expansion ah uh, yes of course and uh, when you said about word of mouth that's absolutely true the more we honor our commitment the more we become known for it and the more people will talk about us and the more clients we receive exactly yes uh earlier you i just have one last question earlier uh, you mentioned that agilecium was never was more focused on uh, big data and uh, cloud services but only recently got into full stack because of a request from a client and yeah. um, so are there any um, new areas that agilecium is looking to explore there has been a lot of talk about the future of big data and um, where um, and where it's going to go after this so are there any new areas where agilecium is planning to explore so um we are kind of uh, with the, so the three areas kind of focus areas from a technology perspective we have put is uh, data um, application and devops right um, now within these itself each of these area itself we can expand a lot like for example data we are doing a lot of work in data engineering um, we can expand there are many areas in data we are uh, we have a, a you know the maturity we have a long way to go for example data science right uh, ai ml we are not doing much work there at this point we can go in that path that is a next step. and today what we are doing is we are working we are working identifying the partners who have a solid background and expertise in data science and we are working through them um, so that is one and then data business consultancy right uh, we don't we don't have anything we are uh, you know that is something maybe down the road we'll look for partners and maybe down the road after that we'll build our capability we, we are not doing much there from a pure business consultancy point of view uh, data governance data governance is another area and we have a partner we are doing uh, we are doing a very limited work there that is another area to expand in the data governance area uh and the data ops right like de uh, devops there is data ops that is internally within our projects we are doing but uh, as an offering we have not done uh, built a, much into that so there is a data offering data visualization data visualization we are doing very little work within our projects and client but we have not really focused into that itself as a big area i've done a lot of work we are uh, working with some partners in that area that is another area so within the data itself if you see we are in the data lake and data engineering but there are other parts of the data which we need to do we need to further you know mature which uh, we have not done so that is in the data area then in other things is uh, there is the e-commerce and uh, we call the space is called digital customer experience from the digital customer experience that is the front end right the web and all that stuff you see so in the digital customer experience another thing we have to do is uh, uh, there is a new area we have ventured into and that area because of the customers needs because pretty much interestingly all of our customers who have this data they want some sort of digital customer experience the digital customer experience can be from uh, the internal uh, organization point of view or their customer facing um, for example umg we are uh, working with their e-commerce e platform digital customer experience uh, there is uh, another customer um, we are doing wonderful and we are doing uh, internal applications uh for the digital uh, you know uh, uh, applications we are doing and these are modern web technologies 
um, that we are working with. There are a lot, you know, people like Rahul, Giri, um, Girish, they are all working on that. Um, so that would be the another area that itself just we have entered, but that itself can actually just like the data, I spread multiple things. There are multiple spread things there. People like Abhijit uh, or Rahul Babu are more qualified to talk about that subject areas. So that is another area. The another one is a uh, DevOps, uh, which is DevOps slash data ops kind of area. Uh, that is something of the these three areas, if I have to say, Today, where the priority and most of the workload is data is happening, data engineering, and then uh, the full stack, the front end uh, things, and then the, the, the DevOps. But we need to further expand. These are the three things we'll be focusing on. And then there are within these three itself, there is a lot. I think uh, we can do a lot. And this is what we'll be, Agilism will be focusing and we'll be trying to expand. This is from a technology aspect. And then from an industry aspect, we are looking at, uh, you know, life sciences and pharma industry, media and entertainment, and then digital e-commerce. Uh, these are the three main industry. And if you say digital e-commerce, that it's a big umbrella. There is a lot happening there. There can be uh, uh, merchandise, consumer goods, consumer electronics, um, uh, e-commerce so a lot of these things come come under uh, uh, digital e-commerce and if we have to exp expand you know grow in that segment uh, in addition to the data the the front end technology is very important the modern front end technology is very important so with all these and we have a very clear focus we this is what there are things we will do outside this but that is to help our customers right uh, all that stuff but actively we'll be focusing and investing and building capabilities in these areas only that is uh, really a lot that uh, agilisium is planning to focus on then but it's a good thing that uh, of course we have to only focus on 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 expanding the three areas in which we are already doing and even within that it's such a vast ocean it looks like the, exactly. the data devops and uh, than the data services like you would think that we are only focusing on three areas but even in those three areas it's like what we are doing is but a drop in the ocean right and these three is actually the if you look at the industry trend uh the these definitely the two are data and uh, uh you know the full stack are the two top two and then I think DevOps uh, is uh, probably three or four, something like that. So these three is the most trendy thing, uh, yeah, you know, where the businesses are seeing where they have to invest. So we are definitely in the right place. Absolutely. And let's hope that uh, we can uh, get, we can attract more clients and uh, expand more in the years to come. Let's absolutely hope for that. Yes. Thank you. So it was uh, really good uh, having this discussion with you, Raj. Uh, this was a very informative discussion and uh, we've learned a lot today. So let's hope we can learn just as much uh, next month when we meet again and have the next topic discussed. Got it. Thank you. I know the situation in India, it is a lot going on. So everybody stay safe, uh, you know, uh, you, you know, uh, do do what best staying safe you can help others uh, but uh, you know it's a little bit of a challenging time you are all going uh, you know uh, so stay safe and uh, you know hopefully definitely this will pass we, we you know uh, this is not going to be stay for too long it will pass but uh, you know the more everybody kind of takes care of themselves uh, uh, then you know if they can do a little bit to help others uh, i think uh, we will come out uh, you know, sooner uh, than later from the situation. So stay safe, stay safe and looking forward to uh, meet in a month. And hopefully we are in a better position uh, from this uh, current situation in India next month when we meet. Absolutely, Raj. Um, hope you and your family are also safe and doing well. And let's hope that next month when we meet, uh, we will all be in a better place. Yep. And on a personal note, I would tell um, everybody in my family have been vaccinated. I would strongly encourage everybody uh, to, you know, uh, the first opportunity to they can get to get vaccinated because uh, definitely that's going to 
um, give the uh, you know give the protection that we need everybody needs so uh, uh, please go ahead and uh, you know when you get an opportunity go ahead and take uh, take the shots um, that will give us the shield yes so let's all get vaccinated and let's stay safe and have a good day raj all right thank you take care bye thank nice you. to talk thank you bye. nice to talk to you